Hi everyone, welcome to the introduction to WC2 Enterprise Integrator 7 webinar. I'm Isuru Dana, an architect at WC2 Integration Team. With me, I have Asita Nanakara, who is a technical lead at WC2 Integration Team. This is the agenda for today's session. So first we will briefly touch on integration landscape and then we will give an introduction to EI7. And we will uh, specifically discussing about three main integrators in EI7, the Ballerina integrator, micro integrator, and the streaming integrator. And at the end of the session, we will be having a Q&A session. Okay, so before jumping into EI7, let me quickly recap on the modern application integration landscape. So in modern application integration landscape, we can see there are two main uh, architectural styles. So one of them is the centralized or ESB based architecture. In this picture, as you can see, there are different kinds of systems in the bottom. There's a finance system, a shipping system, an inventory, payment gateway. So there are various kinds of systems. So if you want to integrate these systems and come up with a more useful system by integrating these uh, different systems, there can be different approach we can follow. So one approach is to use one approach is to integrate them in a point to point manner. That approach is not that maintainable. A better approach is to bring in something called an ESB, the enterprise service bus into the middle and integrate all these systems with the enterprise service bus. At the enterprise service bus, we could host a virtual service or a virtual API which does the integration with other systems. At the virtual service, we need to do different kind of stuff to do the integration. We may have to do transformations, we may have to route messages, we may have to filter stuff, we may have to clone stuff. So there are different kind of things we have to do when we are integrating different systems so all these are handled at the esb layer in the modern uh, integration landscape we are not exposing the apis or the services hosted in esb as it is to the consumers rather we bringing another layer called the api management layer which is used to expose those virtual APIs in a controlled manner to the consumers. We could apply quality of service aspects like security throttling at the API management layer. So with the time, a new architectural style got emerged called the microservices architecture. In this picture, you can see there are two services, service C and D, which actually does some uh, business logic, right? So at those services are not capable of integrating with others. But when we want to build useful systems, still we have to integrate all these microservices. So the integration problem is still there. But in here, we don't have a, a central ESB which does the orchestration, right? So instead of that, the ESB functionality is segregated into different micro integration services. So there we have different kind of micro integration services which actually does some kind of integration functionality. So the ESB functionality is segregated into different micro integration services we usually call as composite microservices. In here, these micro integration services are integrating with other atomic or uh, 
business level microservices as well as other proprietary or legacy systems so they are capable of integrating with microservices as well as other systems in the enterprise similar to the previous style we here also we have the api management layer the api management layer take care of uh, applying these uh, uh, security throttling and those kind of quality of service aspect into these micro integrations we built using the micro integration uh, style right so these two are the uh, two common integration styles we are having in the modern application integration landscape so having that in mind let's move on to ei7 so what is ei7 ei7 is an open source cloud native distributed and hybrid integration platform for integrating apis data and event streams in one of the architectural styles we discuss uh, previously so it supports both uh, esb style as well as microservices style so in this uh, diagram you could see there are different kind of systems in the bottom there are saas applications like salesforce and paypal and there are uh, proprietary applications like sap and also there can be different kind of databases uh, or or there can be other application servers as well so here we have the integrations layer so in there we can place ei or the ei7 which does the integration with all the existing services on the top we have the api management layer which is used to expose the apis exposed by this integration layer as a manage api okay so in a nutshell yes enterprise integrator 7 is uh, consist of different components that can be used to do integration in different architectural styles as well as different development approaches so we to already talked about two different architectural styles the microservices architecture and the centralized architecture and in in modern world we can see there are two types of integration developers the developers who prefer to write code and there are developers who prefer a low code approach basically they like to use tools to drag and drop stuff and uh, build integrations for both these kind of integration developers ei7 provide a solution so ei7 support different kind of architectural styles as well as different kind of development approaches so ei7 enables organizations to connect different kind of systems and expose uh, new systems out of it this is something we already discussed also it allows to digitize the legacy systems what that means is so in any organization we can see there are different kind of legacy systems which is not easily replaceable so but when you are developing new systems you often use new styles and new approaches right so even though you can't replace the legacy systems still you need to integrate these legacy systems with the modern systems you are developing in an organization so to integrate this we can bring in ei7 as a bridge and do the integration so that is what is meant by digitizing the legacy system also we can uh, do hybrid integration so basically we can take data available on on premise and taking them to the cloud we can expose data available in uh, on premise systems to the cloud 
also we can take data available in cloud and expose them to the on-premise enterprise systems as well so these are the things we are doing with ei7 so ei7 mainly consists of three components so the first we have ballerina integrator so the ballerina integrator is the solution we have in our ei7 platform for the for the integration developers who prefer the code driven approach a bell the ballerina is a powerful and a simple to learn integration language uh, which is actually tailored for doing integration so next we have the micro integrator so this is the solution we have for the low code preferred developers so there we have a graphical uh, designer which we call as integration studio where you can drag and drop different kind of components and build the integration solution this is built using the same integration runtime we have in wc2 esb so which means it is battle tested for thousands of deployments for billions of transactions then we have another component called streaming integrator which is dedicated for processing event streams so it can understand streaming sql and capture data coming in event streams and analyze them and process them and act upon those events so it is, it is based on the siddhi complex event processor okay so so all these different integrators offer a cloud native solution it natively support kubernetes as well as it can be deployed in any cloud environment also it supports all the trending uh, technologies out there in the cloud native market okay so now let's uh, quickly look at the difference between ei6x and ei7x i am pretty sure that most of the people who are already familiar with enterprise integrator product has this question so so the first thing is that ei7 x 7x is not the successor of ei6x or ei650 release uh, we uh, have we have right so so these two products so we can call this as two different families ei 6x family offers the conventional centralized integration solution right it has mainly it has the esb profile which also has the data services capabilities and also some set of other supportive profiles like broker profile and the business process server profile so the latest release of the ei 6x family is ei 650 and the next release uh, is ei 660 which is coming in early december which includes jdk 11 support the ei 7x family is the hybrid integration <coughs> platform that enables api centric integration so this is the more cloud native version of enterprise integrator so it it supports all different kind of architectural styles as well as different kind of uh, approaches for doing integrations so these two families will continue to have its own releases so okay so having that background information in mind so let's deeply look at each of the uh, uh, profiles uh, we have in ei7 so basically we we mainly have three profiles ballerina three different components ballerina integrator micro integrator and the streaming integrator so as i mentioned earlier we used to have uh, other supportive profiles in ei6x the broker profile the business profile uh, processor profile and the ei analytics so we no longer ship them as profiles or integrators in ei7 so rather we are trying we are 
seamlessly integrating with all the key players in each of these domains. For an example, as a message broker, we, we seamlessly integrating with ActiveMQ, Kafka, RabbitMQ, and Nats. Same for analytics. We, we, uh, we are seamlessly integrating with ELK, Grafana, Prometheus, and Jaeger. So, okay, so those are the background information we have in EI7. Then let's look at each of these profiles. So, Asita will continue with the session. Thank you, Isaru. So, let's uh, look at the Ballerina integrator profile first. So, it's the newest addition to our WSO2 integrator product suite. So you, most of you might have known about this uh, programming language that we have been working for the past few years is called Ballerina. So it's a core driven approach for integration. So with Ballerina integrator, what we provide is that a core driven approach for integration use cases. So our initial release uh, of Ballerina integrator is based upon the J Ballerina, a Ballerina compiler version. 1.0 series so basically what we plan to do is develop our Ballerina integrator product uh, on top of a specific given Ballerina version in this case for ei7 we are based upon 1.0 series and in coming uh, releases of ei7 we will base our product on a uh, latest Ballerina version and we will keep on providing support for our subscription users. And in addition, we have uh, de developed EI connectors for identified integration use cases and a wide range of templates so that you can uh, bootstrap your projects faster and uh, start developing your integration use cases. And to do all this, we have a VS Code extension so that you can download it from uh, Microsoft Marketplace for VS Code. So in terms of the architecture of things in Ballina Integrator, what we provide is the core, the Ballina core uh, compiler runtime, and then the standard library and a set of integration specific connectors and also the Ballina connectors that we have and analytics capabilities, a set of templates and tooling. With all these, that's what we call the Ballina Integrator. And with uh, that, uh, we might some of the parts are through the installer and some are delivered through the Balna Central, and which I will explain in a later slide. So, with this Balna integrator, you can do all the things that you have been doing with our previous EI releases with ESBs and micro integrators. So, all these capabilities of interacting with proprietary systems, uh, date, databases on-premise applications, file systems, and cloud services, all these capabilities are still there with the Ballerina integrator in a code-driven approach. So when it comes to the development workflow, so we have identified these key steps as the things that a developer would go through when develop, developing their integration use cases. So setting up their development environment and on top of that, developing their use cases using uh, some kind of a tooling and using connectors to connect to backend services like SaaS applications or JMS or database connections, things like that. And then once they are done that, they need to deploy. It may be hosted on JVMs, hosted on Kubernetes or Docker environments, things like that. So, and after that, you would basically need to deploy it and then you need to observe. That's the tracing, logging, and monitoring capability. So all these aspects are covered through the Ballerina integrator. So let's go through them by details. So in terms of setting up, what you have to do is you can go to the website, integration website, and you can download the installer. And from the installer, you can install the Ballerina integrator, the streaming integrator, and the micro integrator. And it, everything will be set up in your machine once you've done the installation. And in addition, what you have to do is you have to go to the Visual Studio Marketplace, and there you can download the WSO2 Ballerina Integrator plugin, the VS Code extension. And once you do that, 
you will your VS Code environment will be set up to do Ballina development. If you don't have the Ballina plugin, it will be automatically installed as well. So once you've done the setup, then comes the development section. So when it comes to the development, you can do uh, like microservices, right? You can write microservices or any integration use cases using this uh, VS Code plugin. And to do that, you might have scenarios like connecting to Salesforce, connecting to uh, Gmail or things like that. So we have identified these kind of integration use cases and we have developed some templates for this so that you can use it as a starting point for your development work or even as a sample so that you can have a look and check how these things are done. And in our documentation, we have a set of tutorials for the identified integration use cases so that you can check and see how things can be done using the Balena integrator. And on top of that, there's this visualization or sequence diagram like view that you get from the VS Code plugin. So if you have a look here, so this is this would be a sample code that you have. And then once you click on this button, so you will get the sequence diagram. And this can be very helpful if you want to see what are the network interactions you do with the backend services, things like that. You can see it just by going looking at this sequence diagram rather than going through the code. And when it comes to the connectors, so the connectors would come through our Ballerina Central. So you don't have it in the installer, but whenever you need a connector, you can get it from the Ballerina Central. And we have a set of EI connectors as well as Ballerina connectors. So in terms of uh, that, its usability, we have some improvements so that you don't have to specifically go to the Central. You can download it through the uh, VS Code plugin itself. So these are the connectors that we have initially identified as EI connectors so that we can cover integration specific use cases. So we have FTP, Samba, Amazon SQS, these kind of connectors, JMS scenarios, the store forward scenario that we all know in EI, previous EI releases and ESBs. So those kind of connectors are there and we are improving these numbers and we are improving getting new connectors into the Balna Central in upcoming releases as well. And this is the thing that I've talked to you, talked to you about earlier, where you can just type the specific connector and you can pull it through the VS Code plugin itself so that you don't have to uh, write any commands to pull the uh, connectors from the Balna Central. And when it comes to the integration templates, you can think of it as a starting point for your development work on integration scenarios. So basically we have categorized those uh, templates under five categories like SAS, SAS integration connectors and templates, messaging like database, uh, JMS or Kafka, those kind of messaging integrations, database integrations, file-based uh, scenarios and uh, EI patterns. So under these, uh, categories we have created templates so that you can use it as a starting point or as a sample so that you can have a look so in these sections so this is how you will interact with those templates through our vs code plugin you can search for specific area and uh, or even you can directly search a specific connector and uh, you will get a template downloaded uh, to your vs code environment so that you can start on top of that or you can use it as a sample itself and when it comes to deployment so kubernetes docker those kind of areas you don't have to do much so you can have your own service and you you simply put some annotations and then you compile with uh, specific commands and you can get it uh, ready for Kubernetes. So you can use kubectl and then apply it to your Kubernetes environment. Or you can uh, have a different set of annotations and create your Docker image. Or you can basically compile it to a JVM hosted binary so that you can host it on a JVM itself. So these kind of capabilities are there in the Bell 9 integrator. And when it comes to observability, 
monitoring, logging, and tracing, those kind of capabilities. So things like Grafana, Prometheus, Jaeger, ElkStack. So we can directly connect to these uh, servers and then get our observability requirements done. So these, and we will continue to improve and support new and other uh, products in this area as well. So yeah, let's discuss about the micro integrate. Okay, so as we mentioned previously, so micro integrator is the low code solution we have for the, the integration developers who prefer to use tools to develop integration solutions. So basically we offer a studio called the integration studio, which can be used to uh, graphically design integration flows. So, uh, so the micro integrator support both centralized and decentralized architectures. So if you are familiar with WC2 EI6X or WC2 ESB, so it is uh, basically supporting the centralized architecture. So the micro integrator is based on the same runtime or the same engine available in WC2 ESB, but it is more cloud native and container friendly. So I will explain why it is more cloud native and container friendly uh, later. So since uh, it is developed based on the same runtime we had in WC2 ESB, we can safely say that it is battle tested for billions of transactions and in thousands of customer deployments. The micro integrator supports a variety of uh, standard protocols uh, like HTTP, JMS, all, uh, all the well-known uh, protocols are supported. Also, it supports some of the proprietary protocols as well. Uh, if some protocol is not supported or if some feature is not available, we could easily uh, provide that functionality using one of the extension points available in micro integrator. So that's why we say it can be used to connect anything to anything. So it is highly extensible. Also, it is high performing as we have a very lightweight stateless engine. Similar to WC2 ESB, it is 100%, it has 100% support for EIP patterns. And so, so it, it is also seamlessly integrating with all uh, some most common uh, observability products like ELK, Prometheus and Jaeger. And in micro integrator, in the recent release, we have introduced a framework for writing unit testing. So basically the, for the integration artifact, you are developing from the integration studio. Within the same project, you could write a unit test so that you can uh, test, uh, test the integration solutions once you are building the project. So this is the graphical editing experience we are providing through the integration studio. There you can see in the middle we have a, uh, the editor canvas. They are, that's the place where we are doing the wiring of different components and building the integration solution. So on the left hand side, we could see a, a palette which contains different integration components what we call as mediators so from there we can drag these components and drop it over to this canvas so that we can build the integration solution so this is the graphical user experience uh, we are providing in integration studio for the advanced developers who prefer to uh, build the solution using the configuration the integration studio provides a source view which has the intelligent support 
it contains a way context of a auto completion okay so the data mapping is one of the key requirement in building any integration solution so the integration solu uh, studio provide visual data mapping capabilities where you can load a input schema and also an output schema and then wire different elements available in uh, these schemas while you are doing this wiring you could also apply different kind of operators while doing the wiring so here you can see we have applied the concat operation while mapping the title and uh, yeah title and the author into the output also uh, we have something called the real time data mapper preview which can be used to test your data mapping while you are building the solution so there you can place some input message and then simply click on try out so that you could see the outcome of the mapping next we have the debugging capability so similar to debugging a code using an ide you can debug the integration flows using the integration studio you could put some breakpoints for one uh, for some of these mediators and then similar to the debugging experience we have in any programming ides we could uh, debug the message flow you could observe the message payloads and other different kind of properties from the from this debug so wc2 uh, ei or the wc2 esb uh, support uh, more than uh, 200 connectors those connectors are readily available you to download uh, freely in our connector store all these esb connectors are supported in micro integrator as well so if some uh, connector is not available we could easily write our own connector using available sdks and cloud apis okay so the next important feature we have is the data integration the, so similar to ws2ei 6x series the micro integrator also has data services capability which you can use to expose any kind of data source data source in the sense it can be a rdbms database or a nosql database or other data source uh, such like excel sheets or spreadsheets as a data service to the consumers so we we do support transactions and also we could we could uh, do data federation as well okay so the micro integrator has the first class support for docker and kubernetes so it is one of the cool feature we have added in micro integrator so in the integration studio itself we could create a docker or a kubernetes project and then uh, you could deploy you could push your uh, docker image directly to a docker registry from the studio itself so you, starting from the integration project and deploying up to the uh, docker registry can be done without leaving the integration studio id and also we have developed a kubernetes operator which you can use to uh, uh, natively bind to the kubernetes ecosystem uh, so that's a value addition we have introduced to the micro integrator okay so as we mentioned earlier so this micro integrator functionality is pretty much uh, same as the esp profile of ei6x but it is the more cloud native version so this is a comparison between the esb profile we have in EI6X and the micro integrator. So the startup time 
has reduced drastically from the ESB, we have it around 40 seconds, but the micro integrator start in four seconds. And the distribution got reduced drastically. So if you are already familiar with TI6X, so we have different kind of XML based configuration files like access to XML, carbon XML. So there are different configuration files, but in micro integrator, we have a single TOML based configuration file, which you can use to configure, configure the entire instance using a single file. And all the mediation or the ESB features, as well as all the data integration features are available in both ESB profile as well as in micro integrator. The built-in clustering we used to have in ESB is no longer available in micro integrator. So the clustering has to be done using the container orchestration framework like Kubernetes. Then the, the integration artifact we are developing from the integration studio can be deployed into both ESB profile and to the micro integrator. So in ESB for runtime monitoring and management, we have the management console, but uh, management console is no longer available with micro integrator. So, so people used to uh, use this management console for developing integration artifact as well as to to see the artifact got deployed into a particular instance. So for artifact development, we are not recommending the management console, even for the ESP profile, we, we are recommending the integration studio. So, so the integration studio is the recommendation for the micro integrator as well. But, for, but to see the artifact got deployed into a particular instance, the ESP has the management console, but in micro integrator, you can use the micro integrator dashboard. So the dash from by using the dashboard, you could see the deployed artifacts and their configuration, but you can't do any modifications there. Also, we have a, a CLI tool, which you can use to see the uh, deployed artifacts. The composite application deployment it's supported in both these uh, um, profiles. So basically the composite application project or the composite application you are developing from the integration studio can be deployed in both these entities without a change. So we have a a RDBMS database based registry in ESB, but that is not available in micro integrator, rather it has a file system based registry. In ESB, the artifacts are hot deployable and hot updatable, but in microservices world, the artifact should be immutable. So we are no longer supporting hot, deploy, hot deployment or hot update in micro integrate. Okay, so now let's uh, discuss about the streaming integrator. So streaming integrator is another addition to our EI7, but it's not a newcomer to our product suite because uh, we have been developing uh, the streaming processor for the past few years and we had the CD core engine for streaming. So this is this the streaming engine based uh, streaming integrator that's a successor for stream processor but what we have do it, done here is we have catered the integration market with the integration perspective with this streaming integrator product and it's basically based on the cncf recognized cd core engine and it's basically a streaming product that you can use to consume streams of data and do processing and uh, and output it to another service. So let's look at the overall overview of this product. So as you can see here in this diagram, 
so you can consume uh, streams of data from different systems like databases or cloud systems or software sensors kind of things or files and then you can do stream tra streaming processing like transformation correlation aggregation and or cleanse data and get insights out of it and then push it back to a, a cloud service or a database or a file system or invoke a micro integrator uh, integration flow seamlessly so this these are the things uh, capabilities you have with the streaming integrator and you can even interact with it through its rest api so one of the key highlights here is this streaming integrator can be seamlessly integrated into streaming systems like kafka nets or any jms system or database cdc's or and files or do to do etl processing and then protocols like http tcp grpc thrift etc can be done and then it can seamlessly integrate to rdbms systems or mongodb hpaze or cassandra amazon s3 things like that and as like all the other integrated products that we have in ei7 it is deployable with docker and in deployed to kids or kubernetes environments and it's a container native uh, friendly product and it's based as i said earlier it's based on our siddhi engine so if we look at a use case of so this is a key use case that we have been doing with micro integrator or uh, enterprise integrator previously like data processing with etl these kind of things so we can do the same thing in a much effective uh, kind of a streaming kind of a manner with the streaming integrator where you can it basically supports all the major databases for uh, cdc's and then you can read from uh, files and do the stream processing and output it and maybe invoke the micro integrator and so if we look at the micro integrator part of it so the streaming integrator seamlessly connects with micro uh, integrator using grpc connection so it's basically a really fast connection with micro integrator and you can directly invoke a sequence within micro integrator using the streaming integrator so this is a added advantage you have with streaming integrator where you have a streaming based stateful integration integrator that can handle complex integration workflows using the micro integrator so that's an added advantage of using this streaming integrator and in terms of existing systems you might have kafka or nets kind of streaming systems in your environment and uh, you can seamlessly integrate those environments with the streaming integrator and another aspect of it is if you uh, somehow maybe streaming integrator get killed and when it starts back up and it will uh, read from the uh, last position so basically it remembers and it's a stateful uh, stream processing engine so that you don't lose any data and in addition one of the key things that we see in our customers is you might start with a kafka or kafka streams kind of a environment where you use it and now you gradually want to do kind of stream processing and you gradu gradually your backend systems evolve so with streaming integrator what you get is a future proof solution where you can do uh, stream processing and in addition complex integration solutions using micro integrator so it's kind of a future proof solution for your streaming messaging and streaming pro stream processing needs and you can basically as i said earlier you can in, uh, in integrate with systems like kafka nets and any jms solution where you stream data and you can output the processed output to another data stream and you have a persistent server state so that if the server gets killed if when it get back up you start from where you left off so you don't lose any processing time and uh, when it comes to developing your stream processing integrations you can use the web based graphical editor so you can uh, configure it through this visual editor and
and as well as if you like you can use the coding based solution as well through this web based source editor so these are the capabilities we have with our streaming integrator uh, uh, okay so if you have any questions we do we have questions yeah yes. we have so questions. so let's have a look at the questions that so, yeah we'll be answering questions in about a minute yeah so let's look at the questions so anyway if you have any questions you can join our slack channel as well so we have a slack channel that we have created so that you can interact with our developers using this slack channel please use this invite uh, so we have a question like so the first question is uh, can micro integrator and ballerina be installed on the same virtual machine and run in parallel so so micro integrator runs in a separate uh, java environment and whatever you develop using ballerina is another product that you can run in a, another jvm basically they, those are two separate uh, server runtimes but you can run it in parallel in a same virtual machine yeah you can run it on a same virtual machine fine okay so the next question is does it support a proxy mode when a request approach esb esb send it to backend and wait for backend responses and only then answer the request yeah the simple answer is yes uh, it's a fundamental uh, feature we have in both esb micro integrator as well as in ballerina integrator so all these uh, products support this use case so the next question is is business process server available in version 7 so the wso2 business process server is no longer available in ei7 so ei6x series will continue to have business process server but ei in ei7 we are looking at in seamlessly integrating with other key uh, technologies available in the market but we are not shipping a uh, our own business process server anymore with ei7 and you can continue to use the ei 6x series bps yes so the next question is uh, do you have okay. plan to keep management web interface which was available in yes 6x version i guess we already answered to this question so uh, in ei7 we do not have the management console for monitoring and uh, within the deployed artifact we have provided the dashboard so doing integration the development we have to use the integration studio so the management console is no longer available in uh, ei server and is it possible to connect to ms sql db from ballerina so basically ballerina standard library contains a jdbc connector so with the JDBC connector, we can connect to MS SQL databases. And not only that, we can connect to any JDBC uh, backend uh, database. And even they have Kafka, Nets connectors as well. Is there a process to upgrade from 6x to 7x? Yeah, so... Uh... Yeah, so the simple answer, so it answer is not simple actually. Mm -hmm. So basically you first need to evaluate whether you really need the upgrade. So basically 6X will continue to have its own releases and if you're happy with it, then uh, you, you might need to consider whether you really need an upgrade. So if yes, there are a couple of reasons that you might, you need an upgrade. So mainly if you, if you wish to go to the core driven approach right so in in ei 6x what we offer is a configuration driven graphical editing experience but in ei 7 we have the ballerina integrator which provides a code driven approach so if you wish to go for that then yes we there's a process then we can do an upgrade uh, but that upgrade is not seamless because at the moment we don't have the uh, 
uh, a migrator tool available to migrate from EI6X to Ballerina Integrator. But uh, since Ballerina is a, uh, a simple to use and uh, a language built to do integration, we, we believe that the migration is not a painful process. So if you want, so if you want to move into the microservices world, and if you still prefer to use the graphical editing experience and the code config driven approach, you could easily migrate into the micro integrator. So all the configurations you develop in my, uh, the EI6X is backward compatible with the micro integrator as well, but there are some exceptions. So for an example, we, we no longer support the built-in clustering. So we are still thinking whether we really need to bring that functionality into micro integrator. So that's the, that's the one of the limitations in micro integrator at the moment. So, uh, so those uh, details are documented in the EI7 documentation. Okay, so another question, I think it uh, matches with the other question as well. Is it possible to mix and match? For example, to use full 6.5 EI instead of micro integrator in EI7 together with Ballerina integrator? Of course, yes. So um, I would add another thing as well. So in EI7, what we have is uh, a set of integrators. So you can mix and match. And in addition, even you can use 6.5.0 uh, version as well. So it depends on your use case. And uh, if you have a ETL use case, you can use the streaming integrator. If you, if you like to do code driven uh, development and you can uh, write using Ballerina integrator, your integration layer, even you can use it to write your services. And if you like the config driven or more graphical editing, you can use the micro integrator. So you can mix and match, of course. Yeah, so there's a related question. When to use CI7 Ballerina and when to use CI7 Micro? I think I've already yeah. answered that question as well. Yeah, yeah same yeah. answer so, we can give it. So I think, uh, uh, yeah, mm. if somebody has no preference over code driven mm. or a config driven approach, mm. so our default recommendation is to go with Ballerina okay. Integrator. So is there an AMQP embedded connector? So as far as uh, Ballerina integrator goes, there is no connector at the moment. And there was a development effort going on in the Ballerina team to write these core connectors like the uh, protocol connectors. But if there is a need and if there is a, one of our customers are using it and if they have a need, of course, we will uh, develop it. And it's, uh, it's depending on the prioritization. And if you have a concern, you can raise it in our github account and raise the issue so that we can uh, help you out in that or even raise the issue in uh, ballerina dev list or our ballerina integrator dev list. yeah so there's a, another question asking does micro integrator support file connector are the all uh, admin services still available yes micro integrator do support file connector but uh, those admin services are no longer available in micro integrator so basically those admin services are mainly used for our uh, uh, exposing the backend functionality to the management console. So that is no longer available because we don't need that functionality anymore. So in the process of making the, uh, the integrator lightweight, we, uh, we remove those uh, admin services. We do you have plans to add IntelliJ IDEA plugins for Ballerina? So for Ballerina, there is an IntelliJ IDEA plugin, but there is no plugin for Ballerina Integrator. And uh, at the moment, we don't have any plans to develop an IntelliJ IDEA plugin for Ballerina Integrator because we are concentrating on uh, VS Code based Ballerina Integrator plugin. But if you want, you can have an IntelliJ IDEA plugin for Ballerina language itself. So you show data mapper in low code approach. What is the corresponding approach in code driven approach? So at the moment, what you have to do is it's since it's a code driven approach, you have to write it and uh, do a mapping um, 
of your own self basically you if if say you have a json coming in and the xml going out so basically you have to write that code and uh, it's it's not that difficult with ballerina like in a dsl based language because it's a code driven approach it's easy to do this in a code driven approach with code itself so that's the approach you have with that the streaming integration development environment is available also as a standalone application like development studio so there's a question asking does the streaming integration also has a standalone application like integration studio so at the moment we don't have a standalone application what we have is a web based application so but we are in the process of uh, you know coming up with a, a new tool which uh cater mm, all these all integrators these so once we get that done then there will be a standard application uh standard desktop application as well so at the moment we don't have it so i guess we answered a lot of questions so, so there are mm. there are few other questions to be answered as well but i think we are running out of time yeah. as well so what we could do is we could answer all these questions through the Slack, Slack channel, channel. Yeah. so you could join the Slack channel uh, this link from this link. link. Link basically, you have to follow this invite to join the Slack channel, and then our developers and uh, ourselves we will answer these questions. Yeah. Okay. 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 So I guess uh, yeah, we can wind up the session. This session. Yes. Uh, Thank you, everyone, for joining. So we will have another set of webinars coming up as well. So please check out our events page and uh, subscribe to uh, those events as well so that you will get uh, firsthand ex uh, experience and learnings from our developers themselves in uh, learning about our EI7 product. Okay, thank you everyone for joining.